good evening. Welcome back to our evening worship service. So glad to see each and every one of you back in God's house. Trust you have a good afternoon and trust you come hungry tonight uh, for God to use his word to speak to us, challenge us, and help us along uh, this journey. Uh, let's all stand together. We'll start off by singing uh, a hymn that's familiar to you, hymn number uh, 166. If you want to use your hymn book, if not, the words are on the screen there for you. At the cross, at the cross, let's sing the first, second, and the last verse together as we begin our worship. can I do for you? Have you ever had that thought? Man, you're serving the Lord, you're active, but you just, how many of you always feel like you should do more for the Lord? I don't know about you, but I have that feeling, and sometimes we think, man, what else can I do for the Lord? I love the line, that last verse, I give all myself away, and I think if our heart's desire is, Lord, whatever you bless me with, it's yours. Whatever you can accomplish through me, I'm willing, and I'm surrendered boy, I believe that's the heart God desires to see. And he'll take that heart, and even in our inabilities and our flaws, boy, he'll take it and use it in ways we never imagined. I know I've seen that true in my life, and if you serve the Lord, you probably could testify the same. It's good to see you tonight. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask him to meet with us tonight. Then after we pray, uh, Brother Caleb will come and walk us through some announcements. Brother Walter, would you open us up, please? And you may be seated. Thank you so much. A few things to keep in mind as we are going throughout our week. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who's already signed up for our spaghetti dinner. We've already had to put a second sheet out there uh, to be able to hold everyone. So thank all of y'all so much for being so willing to do that. And thank you to those who have already come to me saying that you won't be able to join us on Wednesday, but you've donated money to help, the, to help our kids out with the expenses for the 
their trip. So thank all of y'all so much who have been so willing to do that, uh, to be able to help, uh, to help them with that. Your generosity is noted, uh, not just by us, but by the king as well. So thank you so much for your, willing, for your willingness to do that. But we are still looking to have the spaghetti dinner this coming up Wednesday, starting at 5. Uh, the prices for that are going to be $20 for a family of four or more, or $10 per plate, whichever one you prefer uh, to do for that. But all of that, all the money that is collected will go to our kids to help with the expense of teen camp and junior camp. Uh, so please, parents, if you want your kids to have a slice of that money, uh, make sure that they are here by 430 on Wednesday in order to help get everything ready and uh, to help serve and seat everyone and be our little, uh, our, uh, allow our kids to serve you uh, for one evening. So thank you so much for that. The Hire a Kid is also out there right now. List of all of our uh, juniors and teenagers who will be going to our different camps and conferences. And if you're interested in hiring one of our young people for them to help you with whatever it might be, work around the house, a little bit of yard work, something like that. Uh, we have a sheet out there that it can also, you can re uh, sign which child you want to hire, uh, who it is that is hiring them and the time and day you would like for them to come out and help you with that. Uh, but we want to also emphasize that uh, when you go to pay the kids, please make uh, any kind of money that you have out for the church. And we will uh, just put all of that directly towards the kids' balance uh, as well, turning that into either myself or to Miss Hannah, and we will get all of that squared away. Very excited, of course, though, to have our VBS only two weeks away from tonight, actually. So we're very excited. Thank you to everyone who's already stepped up to help us to get everything ready and for those who are going to be helping us uh, decorate and everything. I'll be honest, so to me personally, I think setting up for VBS is even more fun than doing VBS itself, uh, just because of all the laughs and fun you get to have all throughout the time. But thank you to everyone who's helping us out with that, and it'll be a great blessing to our young people as well. <clears throat> it was wonderful just to be able to uh, uh, honor our graduates this morning, to uh, celebrate the accomplishment that they have made, one high school graduate and 5K5 graduates. So please continue to pray for them as uh, they go in into the next chapter of their lives. We're very excited for next Sunday of June 18th, Father's Day. We'll be giving a uh, gift away to all of the fathers that are present next Sunday. So please be inviting people. It'll be a great time for all of us just to be able to be a blessing to all of our fathers. And then, of course, we have our Faith and Freedom Sunday coming up on July 2nd, where we will just take some time and, and thank the Lord for the wonderful country that we have to be able to, uh, to be able to live in and call home as well. We're still going to be having uh, teen parents. We still will be having our little time after service for our teen analysis dinner over in the uh, Family Life Center. So please, as soon as the service is over, you can start making your way over there and we'll just have a wonderful time celebrating the accomplishment the teenagers have made this past school year and uh, very, very excited for the next, uh, for starting us back up again uh, in the very beginning of September. But that is what we have right now in the way of announcements. We're gonna go into a time of another hymn. Thank you, Brother Caleb, and I tell you what, a $20 meal for a family of six, you can't beat that anywhere, and I think we could do that every Wednesday. I'd sign up for that, and uh, we had to get one of the kids uh, fast food this last week, and I think it was at Wendy's, and I think just a regular combo meal ended up being right, right at $10, and I about jumped out of the car and screamed to somebody, but uh, uh, cost is going up, but thank you for supporting uh, the teens uh, through these endeavors, different things they're doing to uh, earn their way and help uh, do their part for these trips. We're excited about it, and again, we invite you to be praying and uh, ask you to be praying for them as they embark on these different camps and conferences uh, this summer. I do want to add one thing, and I hope this is okay, uh, but I know Wednesday nights can be tough uh, for some of you to get here, work schedule, and um, so we're going to extend, and y'all forgive me, um, but we're going to extend the time to 6.45, the cutoff time. Now, if you're retired or you get off at 5 and you can be here early and eat and be done by 6.30, please do, okay? We definitely don't need to rush at 6.45. Uh, but we know some, and we've already asked some to say that, man, they want to be here, but they can't get here um, uh, quite as early as some of you. And so uh, just throwing that out there for those that are here, those that are watching online. Uh, if you can be here early, please come early, enjoy the fellowship, and then, but we'll try to keep somebody over there, Miss Hannah, and even if we have to clean up after Afterwards, we can do that, but if we could serve those that want to be a part but maybe can't get here till about quarter till, and then around around that time, quarter till, ten till, uh, we'll kind of start directing everybody over here uh, for the service, but we appreciate your help with that. All right, let's stand once more, and uh, we're going to sing a uh, newer song, and it's actually been a while, around for a while, and uh, but it's a beautiful song, and uh, talking about the Lord and the satisfaction that he brings to each and every one of our lives, and uh, so let's worship him as we sing these verses together, lift our voices and pray.
seated. And aren't you thankful even in all the chaos, he's still reigning on the throne. And he's mine. And he's yours as a believer. He's our redeemer. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord uh, with our tithes and offerings. And uh, many of you did that this morning. But for those of you prepared to do that tonight, uh, this is our opportunity to be obedient and give back to the Lord. And uh, he has abundantly blessed each and every one of us. So we'll start tonight with sections 2 and 4. And then go to sections 1 and 3. If you have an offering, you can uh, bring that to the Lord tonight as we worship him. Let's ask him to bless uh, the gift and the giver as it goes out to accomplish his purposes. Brother Carroll, would you lead us? is the lamb and uh, thank you musicians appreciate that tonight appreciate brother ken he uh he enjoys serving the lord in the ways he can and uh, even though he can't uh, jump up here and uh, like he used to he still wants to be involved and uh, blesses our heart in special music so he has a familiar song tonight sweet beauty of the land i believe that is and he's going to bless us in song And uh, I enjoy singing it. Uh, I told Brother Linwood this was for him because I remember the first time I ever started singing in a gospel group, he came to listen, and this was one of the songs that I sang, and uh, he enjoyed it so much. And uh, it just tells how all of us seasoned saints, we've uh, worked hard and we're looking for the Lord one day to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And uh, we're looking forward to going there and being with him too. And uh, this is what that song says.
相比一尘。Thank you, Brother Ken, and uh, we appreciate uh, that, and always a joy to be reminded of heaven, amen, and uh, that never hurts my feelings, and uh, so thankful for that day. Take your Bibles, if you will, and uh, man, there's so many places we could go to tonight, but Hebrews chapter 4 is going to be our starting text, and I would invite you to keep your Bibles handy, as uh, being that there are numerous references, we'll go to some of them as we walk down through the points. But we'll start in Hebrews chapter 4. So I invite you to turn there as you're turning. It's good to have some family friends with us tonight. Brother Rayburn and Miss Donner Hare, and uh, glad to ha have them here with us. And uh, thankful for uh, their friendship and encouragement and faithful ministry to the Lord. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. And exciting time to see what God is doing and how he's blessing. And the opportunity we have uh, to dive into his word. Brother Ken, thank you again and uh, for being willing to uh, do that and bless us in that manner hebrews <clears throat> chapter 4 in just a moment we will read our text verse it's really just going to be one verse that we read to start off with and i want to jump right in and, and i want to start i don't often do this but i want to start by reading an article that i came across uh, that really sets the the tone uh, for tonight and uh, reminds us we know we're in a mess we know everything around us is falling apart we know as this morning reminded us, the, the need to stand up and make a difference, uh, even when the world's in a mess. But let me read you this article, if you'll bear with me as I read through this, because I want you to understand what is happening in counties just like ours uh, all over uh, this great land. It goes without saying, but the Bible is under serious attack. One Utah parent, disgruntled by conservative efforts to ban homosexual books for children, decided to take aim at the Bible itself, stating the Bible is the one of the most sex-ridden books around, he wrote, to the Davis District School Board. You'll no doubt find that the Bible has no serious values for minors. He's directing his comments toward the school system, uh, because of different books that have been banned uh, because of the nature of their content. And so that is, that is why he's referring to minor. Now, I don't know about you already, but my blood's already boiling as I'm reading this. And these are already getting to be, be fighting words, if you will. Definitely a heel uh, worth 
dying home. The Davis District, which is home of 70, approximately 70,000 students, uh, removed the Bible from all of its elementary and middle schools due to this one parent's influence in, in writing this letter. The school leaders clearly agreed with the parents' demand to get the Bible out of schools. Not only is this report uh, untrue, meaning it happened, but his uh, approach to the Bible, obviously we know as believers untrue, the Bible is a message that children desperately need. The Davis District is trying to blot out the book that forms the very foundation of the Constitution of America's founding values and principles. This is an attack against the Bible and anyone who believes in the Bible. And what's worse is that it is equating the Bible, the very word of God that you hold in your hand tonight, to the vile filth homosexuals are trying to indoctrinate children with. We live in a world that is attempting to ban the Bible, and it's all around us. Look at the lives of those who indulge in the lies, perversions, and evils that the Bible outlines and clearly forbids. They are unhappy and in unhappy marriages. They are depressed and the children, the article goes on to say, might end up even worse off. It is obvious to anyone that the world is getting worse. Despite advances in technology and knowledge, humankind is even farther away from the solution to things such as divorce, debt, addiction, unruly children, and much more. And the sad thing is, the answer could be lying on your nightstand at home. It could be on the coffee table. It could be on the kitchen table. The truth is that all children and adults need the Bible. Utah needs the Bible. America needs the Bible. We need the Bible. And so tonight, in the few moments we have, <laughs> I'm going to try to get through a lot of information uh, quickly. And uh, so I will try to talk fast, and you go along with me as long as I don't start speaking in tongues. We'll be all right. And, uh, but I'm going to try to get you some information. I certainly can provide so much more on this subject matter, as you know. Uh, but we want to be uh, timely, and we want to uh, be considerate of uh, the Teen Awards Banquet. If you don't know what they're doing, man, for months now, they have been accumulating uh, points on a system where each week they're challenged to read their Bible, pass out gospel tracts, be in service, bring their Bibles, bring friends, all kind of acts of service that they do here in the ministry and throughout the week. And so tonight is the time for them and their families to uh, uh, reflect on that, for the teens to be honored. So we appreciate Brother Caleb and Miss Hannah's work on uh, this. We're just reading one verse uh, in Hebrews 4, so you can just remain as you are. Uh, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner the thoughts and intents of the heart. I think about that opening phrase, for the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. You know why the Bible is under attack? Because it's truth. Because it's life-changing truth. That our adversary is absolutely 100% against. And so as we look in this, keep your Bibles handy, as I said, for a couple of our points. We'll go to different texts just to read some verses that coincide. But I want to give you just a few things quickly uh, that go along with the subject matter of why we need the Bible. Now, I know all of us in this camp, we, we understand we need the Bible and so as we go through this, there certainly should be some hallelujah and amen and, and shouting moments as we agree with the truths. But I do want to challenge us as well, because we can, we can shout it down, camp meeting style, and we can raise it, and we can wave it, and we can talk about the Bible and how important it is in our lives all day long till we're blue in the face. But here's the reality. If we're not in the book, the book's not in us, and we're really not so in love with it as we like for our neighbor to think. It didn't say we had to live perfect lives. It didn't say we had to have it all memorized. It didn't say you had to read five chapters a day. But if we're not in the book, then the book cannot be in us. And if that is true, we're not as in love with the Bible as we want others to believe. Father, would you use these thoughts tonight, your word, to help us 
Lord, I know it's a subject matter we all agree on, but yet it's a subject matter that is under attack in the very nation that we live in. And Lord, these are not battles that are going away. May we, Lord, stand firm, courageous on the truths and principles of your word. Lord, it's our foundation. Not only what our nation and principles we were founded upon, but as Christians, as believers, as homes, as families, as couples, Lord, it is our foundation. It is our strength. And so I pray, Lord, that uh, we'll be encouraged tonight, but also pray that we'll be convicted. Lord, it's one thing to say we believe in the Bible and we love the Bible and we are thankful for the Bible, but Lord, it's another thing, uh, Lord, to, to use the Bible and to, in our daily walk, Monday through Saturday, Lord, to be putting the Word of God in our minds and in our hearts, allowing its truths and its principles to affect us and guide us and, and lead us. And so, Lord, even tonight, I ask your Holy Spirit to convict where conviction is due. And God, if we're not in love with the Bible as much as we like people to think, I pray tonight you'll convict us of that. And I pray you'll drive. Lord, we need families. We need fathers as leaders in the Word. We need mothers in the Word. We need grandparents in the Word. We need our young people and our kids, Lord, at their level in the Word of God. Lord, for it is life-changing. It is transforming. It is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So use your word tonight to help us. Hide me behind the cross. Give me your power and help me to say only that which you would have me to say. It's in your son's name we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. We need a Bible. Number one, we need to understand it provides reliability. The Bible, the word of God that we hold in our hand, aren't you thankful tonight, is reliable. We don't have to read a verse and wonder if it's true. We don't have to read a promise and wonder if it's going to happen. We know that in our hands we have a reliable source. And that's important no matter what day and age or era that you live in. But boy, do we ever live in a, a world and a society that's full of unreliable resources. It's almost to the point now, Brother James, if you don't like something you hear, just wait or two or three days and the story will change. If you, if you don't like a report that you read online or hear on TV, just wait a week or so, and eventually it's going to change, right? Time and time again, we hear of things happening, and we read of things happening, and, and, and we try to uh, 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 pray for these things and, and, and build a structure around them as far as praying for our leaders, only to find out a week later what we read wasn't true, and that didn't happen, and that wasn't just like it was. And so we, all around us, we have sources that are unreliable. Agree? We read things that we cannot depend on. It seems like everything we're told eventually changes, eventually is overturned some way or another. From your news media, which you know we don't give much credence to at all, to your, to your government, which we respect but understand the condition that we're in. Man, there are fewer and fewer outlets, Brother Randall that we can put our eyes on and put our ears to and trust what we're being told. You want to hear a sad, sad truth real quick I'll let you in on? There's fewer and fewer pulpits that you can go to on a regular basis and know that the man that stands behind the pulpit, whether you like it or not, whether it slaps you in the face or not, whether it steps on your toe or not, whether it hurts your feelings or not, he is going to give you the truth of God's word. That ought to bother us, my friend. That ought to be concerning uh, that we are headed in that direction. But boy, I'm thankful that when it comes to scripture, we have something far more reliable than any government. <laughs> far more reliable than any source that we have today in our everyday world. We have the promises of almighty God. We have his words spoken by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to the men that he used to write down the words. We have the very words of God, and they are perfect, and they are pure, and they are true. And I'm thankful tonight, this book I preach from, this book I read from, this book I study from, this book I hold before you tonight is one we can trust. It's reliable. We need the word of God because it's reliable. Amen? 
We can depend upon it. Psalms 12, 7 says, Thou shalt keep them. That is referring to the words of the Lord. O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The word of God stands. I'm thankful, first of all, the Bible is reliable. You can trust it. Number two, I'm thankful. And as we consider the subject matter of needing the Bible, I'm thankful it provides revelation. Now, not the revelation, as in the end of the book, or in the end times, and, and the Lord comes back in chapter 4, and then everything else starts happening after that, but it provides revelation. It reveals to us many things, and, and as far as our faith goes, everything that we stand upon, we believe on, we teach and preach, comes from the Word of God. Now, this list, you know, could go on and on into the evening, and so I've just put down a few for us to reflect on and rejoice in tonight, and I'll try to even go through these quickly as we navigate through the sermon tonight but the major things that we believe on the teens you need to understand this if you have not already gathered this truth children you need to understand this very early age the truths that we teach the sermons we preach the doctrine that we hold the belief system uh, that we are built upon did not start in some board meeting or business meeting or office meeting where guys got together and put their heads together and said, well, you know what, I think we ought to believe this. I think we ought to tack on this. I think we ought to include this. Let's exclude this. That is not how it came about. What we believe and what we preach and teach comes from the Word of God. What we believe about many things, and here's just a few of them. First of all, I'd say it reveals to us the person of God. Man, think about that, and, and Brother Allen, this could go on and on and on, but it is through the Word of God that we can come to know the person of God. We can learn about Him. Scriptures tell us about the fact that He is a holy God. We talk about that and we preach that. He is a loving God. Aren't you thankful for that? He is a just God, and yes, He can be loving and just at the same time, and it is the Word of God that teaches us that. You say, man, our society don't, I I know, I get it. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need clear teaching on the Bible. That's why we need understanding of the Bible. That's why we need to know not only what we believe, but why we believe what we believe. He's loving. He's just. He's eternal. He's eternal. Always has been. Always will be. Oh, Scripture talks about how glorious he is. You ever just pause and stop everything and try to reflect and meditate on what we would call the awesomeness of God? God in all his glory. And I know all y'all a lot smarter than I am, but my little finite brain just can't, can't process it all. We serve a holy God. And it is going to be at his feet one day that we bow down and we worship him for all of eternity. He's glorious. Hey, aren't you thankful we serve a God that's exalted? Above all other gods, above all other things, he is exalted above all. And then I'm thankful for the last two I've included in this list is he's gracious and he's merciful. Boy, aren't you thankful? Brother Ed, aren't you thankful he's a gracious God? And he's merciful too to usward, that are undeserving, but yet he pours out that mercy upon us. Hey, the scriptures teach us that he is Lord. The, teacher, the scriptures teach us that he is sovereign, teaches us he's a consuming fire. And listen, today's, today's ears don't like to hear much about this, but the same scripture that teaches us all these glorious things about God also teaches us, Brother Caleb, he's a God of wrath. He's a God of of judgment I don't know some people argue coincidence back and forth they go but just last week a church that at the beginning of pride month that had openly and publicly and proudly supported the LGBTQ plus community had about a hundred and fifty thousand dollar steeple on top of their building that got struck by lightning and burned the entire church down God's only going to put up with the nonsense and wickedness for so long, folks. And judgment's coming. 
in the pages of the Bible is where we meet the person of God. Hey, it reveals to us about God's power. The pages of Scripture, we can see the awesome power of God. From Genesis to Revelation, we learn His power to create. We learn His power in the Gospels to do uh, and work in impossible situations. I mean, people that came to Him that were at the end of their rope. People that came to Him that had no hope. Yet Jesus worked in their lives. Hey, some of you have testimonies where you step back and you say, hey, it's only by the power of God. And then fill in the blank that such and such has happened. Oh, he's a God of impossibilities. Aren't you thankful that all things are possible with God? It's in Scripture we learn about his power to heal. His power over every infirmity that could ever plague a body that he created. Brother Walter, he has power over it all. And it's in Scripture that we learn that. It's in Scripture that we learn he has power to do anything he desires to do. Thirdly, it's a Scripture that reveals to us the promises of God. Thousands upon thousands of promises that fill the pages of God's Word. And get this, Paris, every single one of them. True. There's not a promise that God gives us that we can't carry to the bank with all certainty and know that it's good. Man, we all have loving and supporting people around us, and sometimes even the most loving and supporting people and uh, uh, men and women of integrity can sometimes maybe misunderstand something, and based on a misunderstanding, they tell you something that, that they didn't mean to, but it ends up that it's, it's less than 100% accurate, and they have to come back and say, hey, I didn't have the knowledge that I just learned today, and I just wanted to update you on a situation, and what I told you last week was, was incorrect. Listen, that never happens with the Word of God. You may read it sometimes in a downtime, in a time of uh, depression, in a time of despondency, and just feel like that that verse isn't true, feel like that promise isn't true, feel like that God may not do what he said he would do in his word. But I'm telling you, my friend, over and over and over again, God's word proves itself true, and you just give it enough time, and you believe it, and you trust it, and I guarantee you every promise that he's put in the book will come true just like he has said it will. Every single one. And by the way, that includes how things are going to shake down in the near future. I'm telling you, the Bible's more up to date than the newspapers of today. And it's already ahead and outlines for us what's going to happen. In fact, after the rapture happens, it's all on a very intense schedule and clock. God already has it all ironed out. And every single promise he's given us. I mean, we can claim, we can take, we can trust. It reveals to us God's plan, and this is big picture, God's plan. You know, I've taught you time and time again that, that God's story started with the Jewish people. Acts chapter uh, 7 and 8, that was put on Paul's, and the, 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 his people, the Jew people, rejected what he was giving them. So now we have the church age. Now we have the age of grace. Now things are being dealt with with the Gentiles. But as soon as the rapture happens, the redemptive story is going right back to the Jewish people. And God's plan all along was to seek and to save those which are lost. And hey, by the way, I'm thankful for the divine sovereign timeout of the Jewish people and that Gentiles are included in this. Amen? I'm thankful it's not limited. The atonement is not limited to a certain people group. But God's plan is to seek and to save all those that will come to him in salvation. I'm thankful that included me. I'm thankful it includes you. It includes your loved ones. So it provides for us revelation and reveals not just these short things we've mentioned tonight, Carol, but everything we believe. What does the Bible say? That's the question we ask. Something comes up, what does the Bible say about that? And we talked about last Sunday night that we may not always have an answer right on the tip of our tongue, right? And sometimes it's okay to say, hey, you know what? I don't have the best answer for that. But give me some time to pray about it, search God's word, and I'll get back with you. Sometimes that is the best answer. And then go and see what God's word says about it. Thirdly, would you notice with me? We need the Bible, and we are thankful it provides instruction 
in all areas of life. Instruction in all areas of life. Now, I told you I'd have you turn uh, with me, and so if you'll be so kind to do that, to 2 Timothy, uh, familiar verses that we have here uh, with regards to the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and uh, if you mark and highlight and underline your Bible, and for some reason these verses are not already uh, marked in your Bible, I'd encourage you to do that now if that is a practice that you participate in. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, talking about how the Word of God provides instruction in all areas of life. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, <clears throat> for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let's break down just a couple of words here that we know and uh, acknowledge and certainly rejoice in. First of all, look, let's look at the inspiration. Aren't you thankful all Scripture is inspired by a holy God? You know this already. If you want to write it in the margins, if it helps you remember, literally, God breathed. Under inspiration into the human writers that he used to put the words uh, on paper that we have today. The Lord himself breathed those words that he desired. And we already read in Psalms where he promised to preserve the words of God to every generation forever and ever. That's why you ought to be very, very diligent and nervous with all these different uh, scripture versions and interpretations that change this change that add this take away this reinterpret this my friend we have the word of god that he's preserved for us and it is inspired second peter 1 19 and 21 we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed can you just tuck that away for later this week i'm not going to preach it tonight but ye do well to take heed to the word of God. That, that is true of all of us. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Don't let anybody fool you. Deceive you. into thinking that we don't have the words of God. This is the inspired Word of God. And I'm thankful we have it. We can read it. We can learn it. We can love it. And with God's help, we can live it. Amen. There's nothing more important and necessary to build our lives upon, my dear friend, than the Word of God. Nothing. Are there other resources? Let's talk for a minute. Are there other resources that are helpful? Are there other resources that are written by, by men that are walking with God, their spirit and hearts in tune with God, and, and they, they write and produce a resource that can be helped to, to couples and families and young people and children and different aspects of society? Uh, uh, God, absolutely. Absolutely. And we use those here. We promote those here. We just went through three breakout sessions where, where we use some of that curriculum. But guess what? All of it is based on the Word of God. And by the way, all of it checks out to the Word of God. You ever concerned about something? I don't know what this author is saying. Line it up with the Word of God. I'm not sure if he's got the right angle. Line it up with the Word of God. Because it's not his opinion that matters or my opinion that matters. It matters only what the Lord says about it. This is the book that we hold. And there is nothing more. Although there's other helpful things, yes. There's nothing more important, dads, than for this book. To be leading your home. And if I can just throw a free bone out there to us men. That is God's responsibility to us. As the leader and under shepherd if you will of the home. To make sure the Bible is in its rightful place. We need the word of God. We need the word of God. Aren't you thankful today. We can get the Word of God in so many different ways. I mean, you can get it when you're riding, driving a truck across the country. You can put it in and play it. You can have it on your phone. You can 
take a copy with you. Thank you that we're still free to take copies of the Word of God with us where we go. We need to put the Word of God in. It's inspired. Second of all, notice the instruction that it gives. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I've already said everything we believe, everything you would see on a, on a church covenant and, and uh, in a, uh, what we believe segment, Word of God. Word of God. If it's in there, we're going to believe it. Amen? We're going to teach it. We're going to preach it. We're going to try to share and, and help people grow in their walk. This is one that don't often get as many amens, but not only is it in there for doctrine, which we need. By the way, just free chew on this later, doctrine matters. It always has, still does, and it always will. It's, that's being cheapened today, and, and, and that's being spray painted over, but doctrine matters, and, and we need to hold to that. But it's also good. The word of God is profitable for reproof. Now that word don't sound as, as pleasant, does it, Brother Vance? Reproof. I don't want nobody reproving me. Hey, listen, I don't know about you. I'm still wrapped in fresh flesh. I need the word of God reproving me. And by the way, if you are walking with the Lord and having your time with the Lord on a daily, regular basis, and there's never times that you come to a passage, to a verse, to a truth, to a principle that doesn't drive you to your knees and cause you to say, oh, God, forgive me for not living by what your word teaches, then you need to turn around and let me see your angels' wings or you need to quit deceiving yourself. I've never met anybody that lives a perfect life, have you? Or is there for reproof? And that's for our good, church. Just like a loving parent says, uh uh, uh child, you're not going to do that. There's a punishment because it's for their good. I'm, I'm thankful. It's for a conviction, brings conviction. And the Word of God, and this old saying that says, the word, as you read the Word of God, it will read you. Brings conviction. And I challenge you right here, don't run from that. I know, I know in the moment, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in a, a service, whether it's in Sunday school hour, where the Holy Spirit's active everywhere. And he speaks to you, and he convicts you. Oh, my dear friend, if it's in a setting where you can get to an altar, you can get to a place on your knee, do it right away. And if it's not in a setting where, where an altar is feasible, Take time to bow your head and bow your heart before God and allow the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to do its perfect work in your life. It only helps us. It only betters us and enables us to live a life more pleasing to Him. It provides correction, instruction and in righteousness. Man, I'm thankful that here in this text that we're in, 2 Timothy, Paul writing to young Timothy, Paul assures Timothy that the word of God will provide everything needed in his endeavors to serve the Lord. And I think we can claim the same thing. But here's the catch. For the way we got to follow it. Now, that's ABC simplicity, isn't it? But we got to follow it. It's one thing to read it. It's one thing to believe it another thing to go out and do it and live by it i like this quote i share it and we'll go on to our final point any matter on which the bible speaks the bible should be our final authority god's word always gets last word god's word always gets last word Fourth and finally tonight, why we need the Bible, why we're thankful for the Bible. Boy, aren't you thankful it provides guidance in life. Provides guidance. I said finally, and the Lord just reminded me, I got a one short one after this, but I'm thankful the Word of God will guide you daily. 
as you endeavor to live for him. And as that finger points to our young people, aren't you thankful it points to every one of us as well? In 1914, Ernest Shackleton and team of his explorers set out from England to do something that had never been done from the position that they were at and the position they were going to, and that was to cross the Antarctica from their location to the other side. While they're on their journey traveling on the, the ship called Endurance, a disaster struck and a heavy storm hit the waters. It was in that storm that they were driven to the ice and the hulks uh, hit the ice. Eventually water, water to begin to uh, get into that boat and the boat began to go down and eventually sunk. But as the story is told, Mr. Shackleton and a few of his men, five of his men, were able to uh, escape out and get on a 25-foot-long lifeboat. And as I continued reading, I found out that they set out on an 800-mile journey. Not on, not on their big ship or yacht that we would see today where a trip could be pleasurable. But in the middle of this storm, 800-mile journey, said to take 15 days and at times around them, I guess is what the story is referring to, waves reached up to 100 feet. The story concludes they eventually made it to their location, was able to get the help they need, and amazingly, and to my surprise, able to return to the vessel that was struck by the ice and begin to go down and rescue their fellow passengers on that boat. But as they reported about the story, they said it was only a simple compass that they had. Now, for some of you, you could get in the middle of woods with a compass, and man, you'd be, it'd be like a field day for you. You could get anywhere you would need to go. But they reported that, you know, today, modern day, we don't even think about that. We've got so much technology and so many voices in our head and ears that says, turn here and turn here, you know, and avoid this traffic, and here's a shorter route, and this and that. But he said only was a compass they used that navigated their course to reach help and safely return. And man, I got thinking about that. I believe a lot of families struggle today with the struggles that they have because they're not using a compass. And although we're not on a 25-foot-long rescue boat in the middle of storm and waves that are bouncing everywhere, if you haven't realized already, we're in a major storm. And really a stronger word and a more accurate word would be battle. And this is the spiritual compass. Young person, you don't know what to do? This is our guide. This book has the answers. Young couples just married, seasoned couples that have been married longer than I've been alive, the book still has the answer. It is still our compass. It is still our guide spiritually. And we must turn to it and consult it and trust it time and time Again, in good situations, the Word of God still stands. In difficult circumstances, the Word of God still stands. Where people make the mistake, Brother James, is they get to trusting human ideology and sometimes feelings and emotions over what we already have in the Word of God. And how many times does that lead us into trouble? Every single time. <laughs> hey, the word of God is my guide. And it ought to be yours. Amen? It ought to be that spiritual comp compass <coughs> Excuse me, that we use. And I'll close just by, let's turn here to 2 Thessalonians. And we'll read these verses and we'll close tonight. The, the fifth one. That is certainly common, so we won't spend much time here. But aren't you thankful the Word of God provides comfort in time of need? Provides comfort. You've seen it at funerals. You've seen it in hospitals. You've seen it uh, when you're trying to minister to a family. 
Although there's a time and place for a bunch of other stuff. Boy, when people are hurting, it's the word of God we need. And if you're ever in a situation, even and not as a, a, a minister, I mean, we're all ministers of God, but if you're not called upon to minister to a family in a time of hurting and, and you're there and you're, you don't know what to say, what to do, pray God gives you a couple of scripture and just give them the word of God. Let the word of God speak for itself. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. The greatest source of our strength, the greatest source of our comfort, many of you holding your hands right now. It is the word of God. And I would challenge you afresh and anew. Here, here, here's the question that the Holy Spirit may use to bring conviction. I don't think conviction tonight comes from you disagreeing with what I've given you tonight. If it does, we need to have a meeting. Amen? <laughs> but where conviction may come from the Holy Spirit is in honestly answering the question are you living in the Word of God? See, we can't really live by the Word of God unless we're living in the Word of God. If we don't know the book, we can't live by the book. So before we just hang our hat and shout and hoot and holler on, man, thank God for the Word, preacher, I agree with you, we need the Bible 100%. What about your life? As a person, as a couple, as a family, are you in the Word of God? Or do you realize tonight, you know what? Utah needs the Bible. Davis School County School District needs the Bible. But Jonathan Ainge needs the Bible. Wayne Tedder needs the Bible. James Price needs the Bible. Ray Norris needs the Bible. We need the book, don't we? Love it, learn it, live it. God enables you and gives you strength. Father, we come to you tonight closing this service together. But we're thankful for the word of God. And Lord, a message like this could go on for hour after hour as we reflect and Rejoice and take hope in the word of God that we hold in our hands. Lord, we're living in a society that 